Hey guys, Miss Gosling here. In this video, you are going to learn about gravity. By the end of the video, you'll be able to solve problems involving gravitational forces. So let's go ahead and get started. So before we get into gravity specifically, I do want to differentiate between two different types of forces. So as you remember, in the past, we discussed the difference between contact forces and non-contact forces. Non-contact forces work using something we call fields. So when a force is a non-contact force, what it does is it generates a field. Gravity, as a non-contact force, generates a gravitational field. Now, when I'm talking about fields, I obviously don't mean this picture on the left, as beautiful as it is. Instead, what I mean is I mean the uh, strength of a gravitational field at a given point. So how powerful the force of gravity will be at given points. So when we talk about fields, fields are generated by forces that act at a distance, and they determine the strength of force that an object will feel in that field, though that strength is also dependent on different aspects of the object being put in the field. Two of our forces that work as non-contact forces are forces that are generated by fields, include gravity and electricity. So we're going to start in this video by focusing on gravity. Next topic, we'll talk about electricity. So gravitational force, Fg, is given by gmm over r squared, where Fg is the force of gravity, which we measure in newtons. Capital G, which we must differentiate from lowercase g, is the gravitational constant, which is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th. m1 and m2 are the masses of each object, which I'm going to measure in kilograms. And finally, r is the distance between my two objects, um, which I'm going to measure in meters. Now, before I get into an example, one thing I want to mention is that it does not matter which object is m1 and which one is m2, because m1 times m2 is the same thing as m2 times m1. So it doesn't matter which object we assign where, as long as you're consistent as you solve the question. So without further ado, let's go ahead and do an example question. Bertha has a mass of 50 kilograms and Abdul has a mass of 75 kilograms. Abdul and Bertha stand 20 meters apart on the dance floor. They feel a gravitational attraction toward each other. What is the magnitude of the force of attraction? So let's go ahead and start by listing out our givens and unknowns. So I know that Bertha has a mass of 50 kilograms. I'm going to call that MB, and that's 50 kilograms. And Abdul has a mass of 75 kilograms. I also know that the distance R from Bertha, Bertha to Abdul, so that's the distance from B to A, is 200 meters. Oh, excuse me, 20 meters. And of course, um, I am trying to find the magnitude of the force, Fg. I know that I'm looking for the gravitational force because I'm given the mass of each object, and when I'm given mass, that means I'm looking for gravity. So my equation here is going to be my gravitational force equation, Fg equals gm1m2 over r squared. So we know that g is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th, m1 and m2 are 50 and 75 respectively, and the distance between my two people is 20 meters, so r is going to be 20 squared. Plugging all of that in my calculator, I get that the force of gravity between Bertha and Abdul is 6.3 times 10 to the negative 10th newtons. And there you have it. Now, fair warning, this problem is a lot more basic than the questions I'm going to be asking you in the practice, but good news in some of our the later parts of this video and in the other videos that I've posted for this topic, I'm going to explore some more challenging questions. So getting into that, I want to introduce the concept of a gravitational field. So as you know, in the very beginning of this video, I talked about how gravitational forces arise due to gravitational fields. So presumably, it'd be useful to know what a gravitational field is and how to calculate it. So for gravitational fields, we define the gravitational field strength G, which is measured in newtons per kilogram, as the gravitational constant G, which is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th, times the mass of the object generating the field, 
which we use capital M to represent, divided by the distance from the object generating the field squared, which again, we're going to measure that distance R in meters. So one thing that I want to point out here is that when you talk about M and R here, we're talking about the, the mass and distance from the object generating the field, respectively. So that is not the object in the field, but the object creating the gravitational field. Now, you may have noticed that the gravitational field and gravitational force equations are very similar. After all, Fg equals g m1 m2 over r squared, and g is equal to g m over r squared. Substituting g in to my first equation, I get this equation here. The force of gravity is equal to the gravitational field strength times the mass. So again, that's Fg, the gravitational force, is equal to little g, the gravitational field strength, measured in newtons per kilogram, um, reminder, Fg is measured in newtons, times m, the mass of the object experiencing the field. So in the previous equation, when we calculated g here, we were talking about the mass of the object generating the field. When we are taking little g and using it to find the force on an object that is placed in that field, we are looking at the mass of the object experiencing the field. So for example, if I were to calculate the gravitational field strength of Earth, I would get that the gravitational field strength of Earth, little g, is 9.8 newtons per kilogram. To figure out the force of an object in the field, such as you, um, I would multiply your mass times the gravitational field strength which I calculated using the mass of the Earth. So hopefully this has clarified the difference between some of these masses. Um, it's really important when you're doing these gravitational field questions that you keep your masses as straight as possible. So with that being said, let's go ahead and look at a slightly more challenging question. The asteroid series has a mass of seven times 10 to the 20th kilograms and a radius of 500,000 meters. We need to find the gravitational field at the surface of Ceres, and we're being asked to find how much gravitational force a 60 kilogram astronaut will feel at the surface of Ceres. So let's go ahead and get started with part A. So for part A, let's start with our givens and our unknown. So we know that the mass of Ceres, capital M, is 7 times 10 to the 20th kilograms. This is the mass um, that we're going to use for a gravitational field equation because we want to know the gravitational field generated by Ceres. We also know that Ceres has a radius of 500,000 meters. And we are trying to find g for Ceres. So with that, we can pick out our equation and we can sub and solve. So I know that the gravitational field strength is given by gm over r squared. In this case, g is, of course, 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th, as it always is. The mass is the mass of series, which is 7 times 10 to the 20th kilograms. And the radius is 500,000 squared. Plugging all of this into the calculator, I get that g is equal to 0 0.01 or sorry, excuse me, I'm misreading my zeros. I get that G is equal to 0 0.186, or approximately 0 0.19 newtons per kilogram. That's gonna be my answer for part A. For part B, I am asked to find the gravitational force. So again, my givens and unknowns, I'm gonna start by listing. So I know that little, so I have two ways I can solve this. I could say, okay, my mass of series is seven times 10 to the 20th kilograms. My mass of the astronaut is 60 kilograms. My distance between series and the astronaut is 500,000 meters because the astronaut is standing at the surface of series and I need to find Fg. Then I would of course plug this into Fg equals gmm over r squared to find fg. But I'm not going to do this because it is the much more difficult way of going about doing these problems. Instead, I want to show you the power of knowing your gravitational force, or sorry, your gravitational field strength. So 
For series, I know that the gravitational field strength is 0.19 newtons per kilogram, and that the mass of the astronaut is 60 kilograms. And I want to find my force of gravity. So I know, of course, um, my next step is to pick an equation to sub and solve. And as we discussed previously, we know that Fg is equal to Mg, which is going to be 60 times 0 0.19. As you can see, this is a lot nicer than using gmm over r squared to calculate the force of gravity. In this case, it's not significantly easier because we are trying to find the gravitational force of one object. But imagine if I had a dozen astronauts, each with their own mass, sitting on the surface of Ceres. If I knew the gravitational field strength, I could calculate gm over r squared once, and then multiply it by the mass of each separate object one at a time to figure out the force of gravity on each of those objects. So before I move on to the next slide, plugging this into the calculator, I did get that my force of gravity was 11 newtons. Um, go ahead and double check me, make sure I've done all of the math correctly here. So before I finish off, I do want to do one more question. This question is very easy, but it is the kind of question that I have noticed in the past has tended to throw off some of my students. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. Lonesome George was the last Pinta Island tortoise, a, a species that is now probably extinct. Lonesome George has a mass of 75 kilograms. The gravitational field strength on Jupiter is 25 newtons per kilogram. If Lonesome George had traveled to Jupiter, which unfortunately he did not manage to do before dying, how much would he weigh? So let's go ahead and start by listing out our givens and our unknowns. That's givens and unknowns. I know that the mass of Lonely George is 75 kilograms. And I know that the gravitational field strength of Jupiter is 25 newtons per kilogram. Let me go ahead and write that a little bit more neatly. Let's see, 25 newtons per kilogram. And I want to know what is the force of gravity on Lonesome George? So here, my equation, I think, is almost too straightforward. So my equation here is Fg is equal to mg, or my force of gravity is equal to 75 times 25. Throwing that in my calculator, I get the force of gravity on Lonesome George, if we were to go to Jupiter, would be 1,875 newtons, or if we are being proper with our sig figs, 1,900 newtons. Now, the reason that this question can be tricky, first of all, I think that in my experience, many students have the urge to overcomplicate and pick the uglier equation instead of the easier equation. And secondly, you have to know that when I say weigh, I mean find the force of gravity. So you need to be able to recognize that weight and the force of gravity are synonyms in this class. So with that being said, let's go ahead and talk about our takeaways. The gravitational force is given by, by force of gravity is equal to gmm over r squared. Massive objects, which is any object with mass, generate gravitational fields, which are given with strength g equals gm over r squared. And if we know gravitational field strength and the mass of an object in said field, we can use fg equals mg to calculate the gravitational force on the object. So there you have it, guys. This is your introduction to gravity. Please make sure you watch the other videos as well because they go into gravity with a bit more depth and, a, and cover some more difficult scenarios. So with that, best of luck and happy solving.